kite fighting. Innocent pastime or dangerous killing. Hello, my name is Skippy Slapbottom. Today we're going to talk about the thrilling sport of Afghan kite fighting. There's only one rule, oh yes, there are no rules. This is strictly a male-dominated event where everyone puts up his own kite. Each fighter usually has an assistant to help with the line and spool, and there can be over 25 kites in the air at any given time, all fighting each other to be the last one in the air. Large kites have quite a pull when up in the air, but most of the cutting is done with the release method, which requires a lot of patience. The younger kids on the ground have a great time trying to capture the falling kites cut loose through battle, and can compile quite a collection by the end of the day. Ah, yes. I've had numerous good old-fashioned kite battles back in my youth. Why, in most traditional kite fighting competitions, we manufactured our own kites. I remember the skins of our kites were made from a lightweight, thin paper, and the spars are usually made from a lightweight, flexible wood, usually bamboo. Ah, but now in modern American fights, the kite skins are made from a variety of synthetic materials. Mylar, aircraft insulation, nylon, polyester sheeting, the spine is often bamboo, but the bow, and often also the spine, is usually fiberglass or carbon fiber. As it may seem like a jolly good time, kite fighting, there are some dangerous risks as well. In India, Pakistan, and Chile, there have been reported accidents involving the brace of cutting line. These accidents range in severity from small cuts on the fighter's fingers to a few reported deaths from contact with the line while riding motorcycles. In recent years, the kite fighting lines have evolved from the traditional cotton, rice, and glass line to nylon or synthetic line coated with metallic or chemical abrasive compounds. To prevent further injury, many countries have implemented restrictions or bans of the use of cutting line. Some of them set limits on the materials used to make the line. Others have mandated safety devices on motorcycles while riding during kite festivals. Some people have been injured while fixated on capturing a cut kite. Other injuries have been due to not paying attention to one's actions while watching battles. Most of these accidents are preventable, while fighting is strictly controlled to a specific arena and proper safety gear is worn by the fighters. Other accidents have occurred due to the masses of people present during large kite festivals to which kite fighting has taken the blame. There is an ongoing battle, religious, emotional, and political, on the subject of flying and fighting kites. From 1996 to 2001, the Taliban government in Afghanistan outlawed the fighting and flying of kites, declaring it un-Islamic. After the fall of the Taliban government, kite fighting has returned to the country with vigor. Bird lovers have declared the cutting line to be deadly. As with any sport, a controlled environment is crucial to preventing unnecessary accidents. Many bans have been lifted as kite fighters, manufacturers, and government officials come to agreements to achieve a balance of safety and tolerance. Now you decide. Innocent pastime or dangerous killing? Thank you.